funny enough that the expert chef who was working uh, in Japanese kitchen suddenly resigned and he went back to Japan. So I was mm-hmm. lucky enough that uh, Chef Arora, Chef Satish Arora was my corporate chef. Wow. He called me to his office and he told me that uh, I know you are too young, but you will have to head this kitchen. So mm-hmm. during that time, I was only aware of light soy sauce and dark soy sauce. That's it in Japanese cuisine. <laughs> so it was pretty tough for me, but uh, there was no other option for me to say no to chef, a person like Chef Satish Arora. I mean, he must have seen something in me. So he thought mm-hmm. that I will be capable of handling the kitchen at the age of... Uh, 21 when I was management trainee. So I was heading Japanese kitchen. Wow. And within, uh, when I took over from that expert chef, within uh, one year, we got an uh, award from all Nippon Airways for serving the best Japanese food among the 36 countries to which it flies. So there was something, uh, I mean, God was extra, giving me something extraordinary skills in Japanese cuisine. So, I mean, the thing is where you are weak, you know that you don't know anything about the subject. So there is the point when you start learning and you try to give 200% so that people don't pull you back. So that was there in my mind and I used to study That's Japanese it. cuisine like anything. And I was lucky enough that I got a chance to train at uh, Basabi restaurant at Taj Palace and uh, many other restaurants. I was sent to Singapore, I was sent to Malaysia and many other places by Taj Group. So I was lucky enough. So today's PPT, I'll tell you, I have not uh, gone much in detail because... Japanese cuisine is uh, somewhat similar to Indian cuisine. I mean, there are many regions in Japan. And if you go in detail, I mean, uh, carpaccio can be a very big topic. Sushi can be a very good topic in itself. Uh, tataki can be a very good topic. Yakitori. So I have uh, put a very basic slide. Uh, I mean, uh, I thought that it will be necessary or this is the knowledge which a third-year student should have while preparing for the campus interview. So very basic PPT I have prepared. You must have gone through it, Chef. Yes. yes, uh, yes. It's a very basic thing. But uh, I thought in today's world, uh, even if we say that molecular gastronomy is not working today, but the thing is we should know about it. You never know where you will be adding spears in your salad or you'll be making foam out of something. So learning never, learning is never wasted. So that is the thing. So in whichever cuisine you are going, in whichever department you are going, but you should be having a little bit knowledge about the cuisine which are doing well in your country. And again, uh, once again, I'll say that uh, even today, I hold Japanese cuisine very close to my heart, even after becoming an executive chef, because Japanese cuisine taught me a discipline respecting your ingredients. I mean, if you want to see how you should respect your ingredients, your equipments, your knife, you need to work with Japanese chef for at least one week. You see them handling their knife, cleaning their knife by themselves, handling one bell paper, like handling one broccoli, they will wrap it, they will keep it in kitchen towel, they'll cut exact florid, they will weigh everything. One florid should be 13 gram, then 100 florid should be only of 13 gram itself, no 14, no 12. So they are very disciplined, their presentation and everything. So I still believe that it has helped me a lot in doing my food presentation. And uh, I follow the Japanese cuisine while plating modern Indian cuisine, European cuisine, anything I do. There are a lot of things which I have learned. You won't believe I was uh, learning something from Japanese chef and while he was doing plating once, I saw him putting broccoli on the uh, right hand side and the bell pepper, triangle bell pepper in left hand side. So I was a little confused about his presentation, like what it is and a quiche in between. So then I could not resist and I asked him after half an hour that what was the purpose of keeping this broccoli uh, diagonally opposite to this capsicum which are cut into triangle shape and why you are putting it in same shape on all the plates. Then he made me understand that in Japan the western side is little greener and uh, in western side, eastern side we have little mountains so this uh, capsicum which I have cut in triangle shape represents mountain and this green part of broccoli represents the I mean they are so particular and this is not the thing that only chefs know about this thing the people who are going to have that food are also aware of what that plate is telling you so what is the story behind that plate so I mean hats off to Japanese cuisine but still I respect Indian cuisine a lot and I love cooking Indian food I'm learning tandoor now so <laughs> I still hold Indian cuisine is also very important in today's world. Chef, let's start mm-hmm. with PPT. Yes, 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 yes. Sir. I'll just share my screen.
Chef, how many students do we have? Uh, chef, we have 110 for now. Good number. A oh, good number. It's still rising, 111. We'll get, we'll get. Chef, I hope my screen is visible to you. Yeah, yeah, it is visible. Perfect, perfect. perfect. So we'll start with Japanese cuisine. As I told you, everyone think that Japanese cuisine means raw fish. Even we right. used to think that when we were in college, Japanese means these people eat raw fish. There's nothing except raw fish in Japanese cuisine. You eat sushi, there will be raw fish. You eat sashimi, there will be raw fish. But uh, I've been working in Japanese kitchen for at least four years. I headed that kitchen. I believe this is my responsibility to make people understand that there is a lot more to Japanese cuisine other than sushi and sashimi. Yes. So let's continue, Chef. Next. Yes. There you go. A little test. Uh, I won't be reading everything. I'll uh, just explain. Uh, as we all know that every cuisine is dependent on its geographical location and the place where, uh, I mean, everything is de depend on the geogra geographical uh, origin of the ingredients and everything. Uh, example, in Punjab, we eat rice because the production of rice is more. So similarly, in Japan, uh, they have uh, seafood available easily and they, I mean, the varieties of seafood, what they get is, uh, I mean, outstanding what is available in Japan. So. You must be knowing that uh, Japan is only the supplier of tuna fish around the world. Mm -hmm. So wherever you see tuna fish of bluefin tuna or yellowfin tuna, you you will get to know that the origin of that fish is from Japan itself. So uh, unlike other cuisine, I'll say history, culture, regional, and geographic and climate have shaped the Japanese cuisine into one like no other in the world. The cuisine has developed in other many over many centuries, initially influenced by continental Asia, but redefined in its own way. So in today's world, you can see a Japanese cuisine is doing too good, not only in Japan or Asia. You go to any other country, you will see sushi, you will see sashimi, you will see donburi and many other things of Japanese cuisine and many stalls of Japanese uh, in mall wherever you go around the world. So it's all about that. Next. Yeah. A typical Western presentation of a large portion of several food all hip on the small plate. This, I'll, as I told you, there is a meaning behind each and every presentation what Japanese people do. I mean, there's a lot to learn from them. So even I put and uh, I try doing something. So one very good example I'll give you is uh, once I did one plating for some uh, Canadian guest and that was, I did a gajar halwa puree in a shape of Indian map using that stencil what uh, student use and uh, we place around uh, 28 different desserts of different state grated on that map of gajar halwa to indicate different desert of different region of india so that was the thing inspiration i took from japanese cuisine and uh, you trust me when we served that dessert no one was trying no one was willing to eat that dessert so everyone was looking at it and clicking photos so there's a lot to learn from Japanese cuisine, as I said. Right. Chef, next. Right. So Japanese meal, casual or everyday Japanese meal at home are often served buffet style with a balanced selection of meat, fish, vegetable, as well as combination of texture, including soft, crunchy, and soup-like Chinese style dishes. Other, other types of typical meal in Japan include bento box, which contains several small dishes in one box. So bento box as we all are aware is uh, one thing which is uh, getting popularity in this uh, new normal uh, i mean i'll give a one suggestion to you chef if uh, you can try and do a bento box session with your students in college uh, so that they come to know what bento box is bento. you say you see in today's world after this pandemic everyone have started serving bento boxes now yeah. bento boxes are what it's just a thing like daba what we have in india you place it vertically and they place it horizontally, that's it. And you get it in a disposable form or whatever form you want in India. It is easily available. So bento box consists of a meat, a starch item, rice or noodle, and uh, salads, fruits, pickles, Japanese pickles. So similarly, we have done a very good project about Indian, box, Indian bento box. So it's a good for learning. I mean, it's something new in this new normal, which students should be aware of. It's a very common term nowadays. Chef, next. 
health fact the japanese diet has been hailed as one of the healthiest because of its emphasis on fresh food vegetable and whole grains with meat and dairy represented in a small amount i mean even if you see a japanese recipe example i'll give you a very common example teriyaki chicken it is not deep fried it is not shallow fried nothing it is cooked at least i prefer cooking it it salamander without using any oil or anything and most of the preparation 80% dishes are done in salamander in dry heat without using much of oil and even if they use oil it is not like our indian oil or anything like indian they use a very particular ingredient fermented product which are good for health and everything like that and they need to know what health benefit that product is giving to unlike us we everything for us depend on taste of the ingredient or taste of the dish if we feel it is tasty we'll have it so japanese are a little different in that case true chef next uh cancer uh, this uh, thing i'll tell you that uh, cancer if you google it and if you search it on internet wherever you want you will see that the cases of cancer minimum cases of cancer is found only in japan compared to all other countries around the world and the only one reason behind it is the healthy food eating habits what they have so it is all because of that so you can check wherever possible but you will find that japanese don't get cancer easily so average life span what we say that indian men's life span is up to 80 years and women stay up to 90 years so similarly in japan the average life span of a man is about 85 years and the women's is about 90 to 95 years and the only one reason behind it is a healthy eating habit so they have a healthy life span compared to any other country or any other region you see you can check that life span of the japanese people is much higher than any other country so equipment and utensil uh, we all are aware that the best quality of knife comes from japan you must have seen the sushi knife sashimi knife which is used for making sushi or making sashimi it need to be very sharp and uh, one uh, very good fact that when i travel to japan for my training i come to know that uh, the japanese knife which the sushi chef use in japan are made from the same material from which the samurai swords are made in japan and the way we have a number for our vehicle similarly they have number for the knife and the license they get for the knife not the japanese knife what we get in local in local vendor shop in india the knife what the japanese chef use from deboning face and everything is completely different and you cannot compare it with any other knife in world japanese knife are one of the best and they are too expensive i have few knife i'll tell you the approx cost of one knife is around 25000 to 30000 so chopstick as we all are aware that in chinese korean japanese we all use a chopstick for eating food but uh, every every chopstick is different i mean uh, the chinese chopstick are completely different from the japanese chopstick if you see in detail uh, chinese one a little wide uh, japanese one a little pointed towards the end and uh, there are two type of chopstick what are used in japanese cuisine basically one which is used for eating is called as hashi h a s h i and the cooking chopstick which are used for defrying the way we use tong or perforated spoon for frying this people use a cooking chopstick which is known as bashi they are almost 1 feet longer and they are tied with a thread in the end and they use it for frying as they are very hands on on chopstick so it gets easier for them to deep fry or turn anything instead of tweezer they will use chopstick instead of perforated spoon they will use chopstick so there are two type of chopstick very common question which is asked in interview uh, cooking chopstick are known as hashi and uh, bashi and cooking eating one are known as hashi uh, again they have a very simple rice cooker uh, which we get easily in market in india you get any brand philip panasonic anything uh, cooking rice in a rice cooker makes it very easy to cook japanese rice as we all are aware japanese rice is sticky in nature and it is good for making sushi and everything so you just have to follow a simple ratio of 1 is to 
you wash your rice thrice and you just have to add equal quantity of water in an electronic cooker and that's it it's done uh, and you keep it on automatic mode after 20 minutes it will get done so rice cooker is very important wherever you see japanese kitchen or a japanese session in any hotel or any restaurant you will see a rice cooker there then we have a japanese omelet pan uh, which is called as tago yaki pan now this pan is something unique uh, what you get it is rectangular non-stick pan in shape and it gives you omelet something like roulade shape uh, i mean it you can see it on youtube also it's a very good thing to learn i mean it takes almost a couple of months of practice to perfect in this making tamago yaki pan again it is it is very trending you see in restaurants or in hotel they have started serving tam tamago yaki omelets in breakfast for asian guest so this is again a very good thing which students should be aware of am i going too far chef no no it's good 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 it's a very basic thing what i put i think yes, more yes, than yes. clear yes then we have a bamboo rolling mat which is used for making sushi and it has multiple use i mean you can serve noodle on it you can roll your roulade any roulade with using a bamboo sushi mat gives you a natural feel i mean instead of using a plastic one but again due to fssai rule and iso rule we have stopped using this wooden sushi mat practically in kitchen of a hotel or a restaurant we use this plastic one which is available in market nowadays so this is a traditional one then they have a noodle bowl this is again chef a very good concept what is trending in today's world donburi are the japanese noodle bowl uh, in today's i have seen many restaurant are working on it even we are working on it so bowl in which rice or noodles are served below and on top of that they put any gravy so for example in chinese cuisine you can put any scallion fried rice or a garlic fried rice and you can put a good black pepper chicken gravy on top of it and it is a black pepper donburi so it is again a, a thing on which we should start working i mean it takes a less space compared to a complete uh, well presented a la carte meal it you can say it's a grab and go kind of thing uh, you can put it in a disposable bowl so these are the thing which everyone is looking at now bento box donburi bowl so these are the thing which should be included in projects of student i think so they yeah. they understand that what is the use of it and how it works very well in today's world true next now bonito flex the way we have a way we use a lamb bone and chicken bone for making stock in western cuisine similarly in japanese cuisine they use bonito flakes bonito is a fish flake flakes which is used for making a japanese basic stock in any kitchen or in any recipe you do japanese cooking you need to have a basic stock ready with you and this stock you get from bonito flakes and this bonito flakes are easily available in market so basically it's a dry fish flakes chef next then again a very important ingredient as we all are aware everyone is talking about health nowadays so green tea is in a very trending thing i mean everywhere you will see green tea tiramisu happening instead of a coffee thing coffee, everyone have eliminated coffee from tiramisu now we'll see green tea tiramisu everywhere green tea dessert green tea mousse so green tea is trending again you get in dry form for uh, making teas and everything and for dessert you get a green tea powder which you have to put a uh, icing sugar or a powder sugar into it for sprinkling on dessert or making any pastry out of it so again it's a very expensive ingredient but a very delicate one now indian people have also start uh, i mean they have got used to this flavors of green tea and everything now daikon radish is uh, somewhat similar to the radish what we have but the main purpose of putting this here was uh, you see every a uh, noodle dish or a uh, sushi dish or any salads in japanese cuisine you will be having this a uh, piece uh, small portion of grated and boiled japanese radish served with a dash of soya sauce on it i mean it is a very uh, common thing which you will see but we people don't uh, we people are not able to make it out that what it is but it's nothing but a radish which is grated boiled and then 
a squeeze out and then you put a little dash of soya sauce into it and it gives a very good aroma and add on the flavor of the dish sea kale combo are again a seaweed so as i told you bonito flakes are fish flake which are used for making stock similarly the uh, good population of japanese people is a vegetarian so for vegetarian people you have this sea kale combo which is used for making stock again the recipe of bonito and combo is completely same you just have to soak it into water blanch it and then strain it out that's it combo is also used in many salad nowadays for making rolls so it have a very fishy aroma but it is not non veg so that makes it unique if you want to work on a neuro gastronomy or something like that this is the ingredient which you should include i mean the people who don't eat non veg they will get to know how it tastes and how it smell so lotus root is uh, again a very common asian ingredient but as we all are aware that we people have underrated it it is easily available in india you see um, in many cuisine in our history it is said that lotus root was everywhere in all vegetables it used to be added in everything almost in every dry vegetable preparation or everything but now we all uh, have forgotten it and other countries like you will see in chinese cuisine thai cuisine or japanese cuisine they use it like anything you will see in miso soup you will see wherever in salad you will see a lotus root because it has some unique character as it remains crunchy even if you cook it you mix it with salad or do whatever you want it is full of water and it remain crunchy so being a chef i think it is our responsibility to give it importance and include in our when menu wherever possible i mean there are student i mean uh, almost 2 to 3 years back i've seen student were not able to make make it that what it is when i showed them and they were hotel management graduate student and when i showed them this lotus root they were not able to make it they were not knowing about the lotus root so it is our duty to make it available for the students to understand what it is and what are the characteristics of the lotus root very good ingredient i mean you make a good fitter out of it you can make a lotus root thai honey chili all classical dishes cucumber is uh, somewhat similar to the english cucumber what we say today uh, you say it uh, lebanese cucumber israeli cucumber green in color this is again easily available nowadays in market in indian market and this is not something new what we are seeing today these are these are all part of our i mean history of our cuisine indian cuisine we always used to have lotus root in our cuisine in kashmiri cuisine or in punjabi cuisine wherever you see this cucumber is also our cuisine but we have forgotten it and the other people which i mean japanese people or chinese people they are having it and they are healthy and they have a good life span they have a they don't get cancer easily but we indian have adopted the eating habits of other countries americans italian and we want to eat everything except anything healthy and now because of this pandemic and this corona thing everyone is suddenly started talking about healthy ingredients healthy menu ghar ka khana comfort food and everything like that and what it is it's all existing uh, around us but we all are responsible for it that we have underrated our ingredients again egg plant uh, japanese egg plant even this egg plant is easily available in market today uh, it's little longer and the color is little unique it is dark purple in color you just have to grill it or you just have to bake it with some miso sauce and you get a good egg plant steak uh, you can say it can replace a chicken teriyaki if you cook it with teriyaki sauce is much it tastes much better than chicken teriyaki it is called as nasu in japanese so this all our dish again egg plant how many how many of us do prefer eating egg plant this is again a healthy ingredient and this all what i have added in this ppt are all star ingredients of japanese cuisine and as you will agree with me chef that this all ingredients are very familiar to us but we yeah. avoid eating it true 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 agree with you chef this is again a very uh, known ingredient wasabi which everyone talks about it's basically a japanese horse radish which is a um, little pungent in taste and in india it is very difficult to get a fresh horse radish we get it in a paste form or in a powder form which is again adulterated or uh, to make it paste they add something to it which 
doesn't keep it fresh or it doesn't taste like a fresh wasabi but a fresh wasabi is very difficult to get as i told you it uh, remains fresh for uh, hardly for a week if you remove it from deep freezer and uh, again it is very costly to use uh, 250 gram of uh, fresh wasabi is around 20000 rupees kg in india but again it is the ingredient which students should be aware of i mean if you go for industrial training or if you are a new joiner your japanese chef or your japanese kitchen team will make you taste wasabi and then you know how it is <laughs> true true then tofu is a soya bean curd as we all are aware japanese uh, cuisine have uh, ex- they use extensively the soya bean products so instead of uh, this is a very good option for japanese people you brush little miso sauce you give a tofu steak you put tofu in the curry or whatever again soya bean is a very healthy thing to eat these people eat lot of soya bean uh, milk they drink they eat lot of miso paste they eat lot of tofu so again a healthy ingredient and the star ingredient of japanese cuisine is tofu sesame seed are uh, somewhat similar to indian sesame seed but uh, these are toasted and uh, it is quite expensive i'll say 1 kg of a japanese sesame seed which are known as goma is cost you around 2200 rupees in india so little different and nutty taste uh azuki beans are similar to a uh, raj it we get it in a fermented form in and uh, it is extensively used in japanese dessert we all are aware about doriyaki pancakes so this azuki beans are a main ingredient of doriyaki pancake i mean this feeling goes in doriyaki pancake and you will see many dessert using azuki beans are made in japanese cuisine so next so as we spoke about uh, kombu dashi kombu kelp and the hon- the katsubushi or the bonito flakes this both ingredient are used for making veg and non veg stock but we get this readily made powder of hondashi which is used for making a japanese stock i mean the chef in old time used to make it using bonito flakes and kombu but in today's japanese kitchen wherever you go you will see this hondashi powder now this hondashi powder is nothing but a bonito flakes and kombu mixture which is used for making stock a very simple i mean it is a hardly 5 minute process to make a japanese stock nowadays you take 8 gram of hondashi powder and add it to 1 liter of water very simple very basic 8 gram of hondashi powder 1 liter of water you bring it to boil simmer it for a while 2 minutes and you remove it from flame you get a good stock japanese stock i mean you can beat any professional chef using this powder and it is easily available in any market any market you say any vendor you will, they will give you this hondashi powder because now we indian people and indian chef have started using it in all the seasoning i mean we are known for shortcuts we use this powder directly and we put it in a vinaigre dressing or in mayonnaise and we tell it that it's a japanese stock based marination or a japanese stock based dressing like that so they directly add this to the sauces and the recipes a uh, japanese soya sauce uh, this is again a very common question uh, which interviewer can ask uh, there is a huge difference between a japanese soya sauce and chinese soya sauce i mean you cannot make a teriya good teriyaki sauce or any other sauce using a chings soya sauce or any other soya sauce a japanese soya sauce is completely different little mild in flavor very rich and uh, again i'll tell you that uh, one very good question is uh, which soy sauce is saltier so as we all uh, think that uh, as the name suggests dark one will be more saltier but we are wrong light soy sauce is much more saltier than a dark soy sauce and this was question asked to me during interview also so it's a very common question and uh, there are few good brands with i mean in japanese cuisine if you see i prefer using kikimon soy sauce but you will see any other japanese chef in any other hotel he will be preferring using yamasa or igashi maro these two three brands are the one which japanese chef prefer using it if you give a chinese soya sauce or a thai soya sauce to japanese chef he won't work only or he will not start making sauce only so it is completely different 
this happens to me when i went for demo to some place they invited me for demo and they placed that chinks ka soya sauce in front of me for making a japanese sauces so this completely different thing uh, dark soya sauce is known as koi kuchi soyu and light soya sauce is known as usi kuchi soyu again a very common question which is asked uh mirin as we use a uh, rice wine or we use a white wine dark wine red wine and any other wine in western cuisine for making of a sauce or any dressing we have a rice wine which is known as mirin which is very sweet in taste used for making any sauces you see japanese sauces they add sugar or if they are not adding sugar you will definitely see mirin in that sauce and nowadays as we all are aware that everyone loves to play with ingredient you can see a uh, bonito flakes been used in some salad seafood salad for dressing in western cuisine similarly people have started using mirin in western cuisine now as it's a good rice wine and uh, a very very good i mean it have a completely different flavor than the western wines what we use for cooking sauce and everything so people have started using mirin in the cooking lot of cooking in western dishes and any other dishes also this konyaku is a yam jelly as we all are aware that whenever we put uh, any jelly any kind of jelly is exposed to heat it tends to melt or it start melting because the gelatin melts but chef i'll tell you this jelly is something unique this is yam jelly and you can cook it for i'll say you can cook it for 4 hours and nothing will happen to it it will hold that texture the way it is but it takes longer time to absorb any flavor it is basically a yam jelly mm -hmm. again it is something very unique available in market but people are not using it i mean not much people are aware of it but uh, you can surprise any guest if you put any jelly in their hot meal it because of its texture first of all and everyone gets surprised when they come to know that it's a jelly and it doesn't melt even if you cook it for so long time and again it's a healthy option so konyaku jelly is again a very good thing you get it in a white form you get it with added little soya sauce which you can see in this picture in mm. black color so again a very good thing sesame oil as i told you uh, japanese sesame seed itself are more costlier than indian i mean there is no comparison so this sesame oil is made using that sesame seed goma japanese sesame seed and the this bottle what you are seeing is around a 1.8 liter bottle this cost you around 4000 to 4500 rupees and you cannot again compare it with chinese so chinese sesame oil or indian til ka tel what we use in indian dishes this completely different again if you want to have japanese dressing for anything any event you need to have this sesame oil this is completely different means you add a uh, two three drops of this sesame oil to four to five liters of your gravy it will change the complete taste of that gravy is that strong wow again as we all are aware noodles uh, but uh, we know only veg noodles and non veg noodles that's it but in japanese cuisine these are again very trending thing you will see udon noodles are wheat noodles these are again used everywhere used now in any other cuisine you will see uh, udon noodles are been cooked with tomato sauce nowadays creamy vara and everything and they name it as uh, wheat spaghetti or wheat noodles something like that soba noodle are again a buckwheat noodle which are very strong uh, somen noodle a wheat flour noodle little thinner than udon noodle chashoba noodle are very interesting made using buckwheat flour and green tea is added to that noodles so it, those are green in color and it is basically served in a cold soup or in cold salad noodle salad chashoba noodle because of its mild taste so these all are the noodles which uh, i believe students should be knowing about it these are basic noodles uh, which are used in any asian cuisine nowadays and as i told you everyone is talking about healthy option or healthy ingredients in today's world suddenly so these are the thing which everyone have to include in their menu i mean sounds really good when you add buckwheat flour noodle hakka chow mein so it's something attractive and people think that what is buckwheat flour noodle now so you add a chashoba noodle or green tea flavor noodle with cold stock so it add value to your menu and these are not much costly i mean 
you definitely you cannot compare it with the noodles what you get chinese noodles but these are not that costly you can definitely try it out once as i told you main elements of japanese cuisine are rice as we all know this uh, people as we have uh, roti in our indian cuisine or any other indian breads these people are completely dependent on rice i mean 80% people prefer eating rice and 20% will be preferring eating noodles and everything so rice is considered as a main starch soya sauce there is no i will say marination or no sauce or no dressing which will be made without using soya sauce in japanese cuisine again miso paste is a fermented soya bean paste again soya bean is uh, easily available in japan i mean they use in everything soya sauce is a derivative of soya bean so miso paste is derivative of soya bean tofu is derivative of soya bean so as you can see as soya, soya bean is easily available there all the products they will add miso marinated chicken miso marinated tofu or miso soup which is again a national soup of japan the way we people we indian drinks uh, tea four to five times in a day japanese people prefer eating miso soup me drinking miso soup or eating miso with the noodles so that, that important and again it is fermented healthy thing sushi as we all are aware is one of the star uh, dishes of uh, japanese cuisine i mean at least we until we, we did our hotel management we were only ab aware about sushi sushi is all what we know about japanese cuisine and everyone is making sushi nowadays but uh, let me tell you the proper apprenticeship what uh, japanese chef do in japan when i went there i realized that uh, it takes minimum 4 to 5 years of practice to make a perfect sushi roll and it is not like you put any staff from your cold kitchen and he can make a sushi that we are doing here in india but practically this is not the way the sushi is done takes lot years of practice to perfect in this sushi art of making sushi i'll say it's completely different i mean you cannot put a hot kitchen japanese chef into a sushi if he is a good sushi chef he can he cannot go and work in a japanese hot kitchen i mean it's a completely different topic and huge topic what sushi is nigiri sushi is a type of sushi it's a open sushi without nori sheet and it's just a rice and top of it you put put piece of meat and we all have replaced it with a vegetarian ingredient also nowadays you can see asparagus nigiri tofu nigiri shiitake nigiri marinated shiitake nigiri so it's a type of sushi again maki sushi or sushi in which nori sheet come outside is a very basic type of sushi which we all are aware of next is temaki sushi is a concept sushi uh, in which rice fish you can put any other veg ingredients in it the outside what you are saying is a nori seaweed which is vegeta vegetarian and again it have a very strong seafood aroma in it but it's a vegetarian shit made using uh, seaweed uramaki is also known as california roll because it was uh, it is believed that it was invented in california it is inside out roll you can say in which nori sheet come inside if uh, we are using nori sheet and inside out roll uh, with a uh, similar ingredients and you can put any garnish like tograshi which is japanese chili powder or you can put sesame chef next any questions yes sir i wanted to ask you chef you missed out on the futumaki yes there are many or... many i mean i can say there are there are many type of sushi almost uh, 10 type of more sushi which are there there is chirashi yeah, sushi this chirashi is, is again a scattered sushi osamaki is sushi. again a bigger yeah these are usually which i have seen when we make in a uh, in the cruise ship kitchen yes yes this these are basic five type of sushi which i think okay, every so student should be aware of whenever they are giving yes, interview yes, yes, it yes, can yes. be a common question for everyone yes 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 
So there are many type of sushi. Them. You name it. I mean, you can see there is a bunkan sushi, which is again only topping is there, and there is a chirashi sushi, which is scattered sushi. There is osama ki. There are many sushis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sir, futmaki is a basic uh, sushi. Yes, it's a basic sushi, but uh, okay. somewhat similar to maki roll. Okay, okay. It differs only in size. That's it. Okay. And uh, one more thing, sir. Most yes. of the people have the concept that the uh, fish that is used in sushi is uh, like uh, half cooked or, or uh, raw. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. See, the I mean, uh, you cannot say any but, seafood. Uh, you get salmon from Norway, and you cannot say that yeah. I'll be using uh, this salmon what I have got from Norway in my sushi, and I will serve it raw. In market, you get sushi grade yeah, yeah. fish, which is freshly frozen. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And which yes, comes from yes, a trustable yes. source. Yes, yes. I mean, you they should be having. That that faith in that vendor who is getting yeah, your fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you are getting yeah, tuna, yeah. you must be knowing that he is straightly getting it he's from straight Japan straight and he is sourcing it to you. Yeah, because I have seen most of the Japanese chefs they don't prefer to use the Norwegian type of sushi. No, uh, it is com- it, it is completely different. You cannot eat nor you cannot eat Norway yeah, 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 thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, people have the mis- misconception that uh, they use the Norwegian salmon and the sushi. No, no, is, no. Uh, I feel wrong. Yes, Japanese people do eat raw fish, and even we can use. But you will have to check that is yes. it sushi grade? Yeah, you need to. It? Yeah, and then you need to acquire a taste for the sushi also. Yes, yes, yes. And very good, very good thing. Uh, I'll tell you that uh, very few people are aware that in our hotel also we have started using tuna, bluefin tuna, which comes from Cochin. Yeah. And now, trust now me, it is it Putin is also. it is similar, or I'll say you it is hundred percent same. You cannot like say Japanese bluefin tuna. It will be like say ninety nine percent similar. It to is hundred percent, hundred percent sustainable okay, okay, okay. local ingredient which we <laughs> all should promote now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you get bluefin tuna. You will have to take it at seven thousand, eight thousand rupees. You get hundred hundred grams block. In yeah, that yeah, yeah. If you source it from from Cochin. A bluefin tuna, which have, I mean, a very rich flavor, very buttery taste. I prefer using Cochin tuna any time, if compared to Japanese one, because I am Indian and it is my responsibility to promote my. <laughs> correct, correct. Uh, one very good example again, I'll give you as we have started the topic. Uh, in our restaurant, we serve uh, everyone serve jasmine rice with chili crab or any other Chinese yeah, dishes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, Many Maharashtrian people will be aware of this rice. Ambe Mohar rice is a rice, a very cheap rice which is very rich in aroma and which have very good texture. And we serve that Ambe Mohar rice with our Chinese dishes. And you trust me, it is ten times better than the jasmine rice what we were getting from Thailand. Rice. Ambe Mohar is forty rupees kg rice. And Maharashtrian people. Used to use it. I mean, they used to eat it twice a day in olden times. But now we have forgotten it, and it is available in farmers market. You go to Banda, you will easily get it in fa- farmers market. And trust me, if you don't trust me, you go to market, you buy little ambe more rice, and you just steam it and cook it. You will say that I won't ever eat jasmine rice. I'll only eat ambe more rice. <laughs> so again, a local thing which we should promote now. True, 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 true. Thank you, Sean. Anybody has any questions? Can unmute and speak. Anyone? Any questions? Sir, one more question. The yes. uh, what? 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 Uh, if we don't. find the kikoman sauce in the market can we use a local soy sauce no kikimon is kikimon is very easily available my friend i mean i've been working since last 10 year in this industry there was never shortage of kikimon soy sauce and uh, let me tell you no, one thing that kik- now uh, production of kikimon is also done in india 
chef, can you tell us of one place that, uh, I mean, I, we, we are not uh, promoting any place, but is there any one specific place where ingredients is easily available yes, for yes, yes, like the lay person? Um, yeah, I, will, I will definitely, I will definitely share contacts with chef. Okay, chef Malo, I will give him contacts and detailed price list, everything, whatever he wants. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Because whenever we are, uh, you know, about to get the ingredients, it ingredients. has been such a... Uh, I will help you out. I will help you out, ma'am. I'll share contacts and everything. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Are these students going to ask questions? Because I, I have a few. This, uh, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed uh, listening to it. So uh, the Hondashi powder... Is, yes, do you have to buy it in bulk or it comes in those little individual like you it know. comes in one kg pack ma'am uh, okay. sometimes you get two packets into it okay in silver color so you just have to put it you just have to store it in a dry place okay. and it is very simple ma'am you just have to put water for boiling and you add eight gram of this the, stock yeah, powder. eight grams to a liter yes that's it ma'am your stock japanese stock is done Done, ready, lovely. And when it comes to the Mirin, is there any specific brand or does it matter? Like, no, you know, ma'am. Uh, you, no, 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 no. Mirin, uh, you hardly get one, a couple of brands in India, not more than that. And I'll okay. add one more thing. You have uh, sake also. Sake is again right. a local wine, yeah. uh, right. which is which is very, I mean, they use it like anything in Japanese cuisine also. But right. uh, the thing is, sake is... Uh, used for consuming also. I mean, it's right. an alcohol. Mirin, no one can drink Mirin as it is uh, Cooking, very right. sweet in nature. But yes. sake, everyone drinks. And even if you see in kitchen, the chefs keep sake inside the cupboard or inside the shelf. <laughs> okay. Every other ingredient in any Japanese kitchen, you will see lying outside, but sake is kept inside. That's lovely. So, you know, <laughs> I love that you, are, you, you spoke about the blueprint from Kochi. And the yes. uh, rice that you're using, is there any other Indian ingredient that can be used for other things uh, that, you know, even if it's just a, a, like, you know, if we, let's say, for instance, you couldn't get the regular uh, uh, Japanese cucumber. And if we yes. had uh, uh, English cucumber, is there's like a cheap kind of thing where maybe we could dip it in something that would give that and the thing what we, what we called it as a english cucumber or lebanese cucumber is not from right. anywhere imported it is from okay. our market you will get it in vasai verar also okay. or you will get okay. it in danu also so okay. this is a thing what we have given names okay and okay. i mean even in our restaurant meshi pan asian restaurant uh, i'll say 80 percent ingredients are locally sourced okay. we have found replacement of everything and uh, I'll tell you that you should, you must have visited this Bandra market, farmer's market. Yes, yes. There on yes. every Friday. So yes. you should take trip of your student to that market, ma'am. When we were doing R&D of our menu and uh, when we decided to go to this Bandra market, I have habit of visiting this, this market. This is the Monty Park, right? Yes, yes. So okay. I have this habit. Whenever I get off also, I love to go to market with my mom and I keep my mouth shut. And I keep okay. <laughs> keep on learning from her that how she select fish and how she do bargaining and how ingredient right. selection is done. Still, I have that habit of visiting market with my mom. So okay. I have I had this in my mind that I'll visit whenever I'll join some place or I'll do menu planning for some restaurant. I'll definitely visit this market. And when we went there, I'll tell you this is the only one name what I have given you. Mb Mohar rice. There were ten different right. type of rice. 20 okay. rupees kg, 30 rupees kg, 40 rupees kg, and they were much better than any other rice. Okay. I mean, being okay. working in this industry in Japanese kitchen, I have used 850 rupees kg rice, which used to come from Japan, is called as Akita Komachi or okay. Koshi Kari, Koshi Buki. But I mean, I, I, I've gone mad when I tasted this Ambemor rice. <laughs> it is so good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is it's so good to hear that we have had. So many things in our backyard we don't use, but we're no, constantly no, but going suddenly, out. Yeah, suddenly we have started using everything now. Yes. As I, I am stuck here in my native place, I'll tell you one very good thing. I, uh, they did harvesting and everything in front of me. So I, I have this eagerness inside me as we are related to food industry. I right. keep on visiting my farm and everything that like how Korind. Last year when I was here, you trust me, being a chef and 10 years into this industry, I saw I saw this coriander in my farm. I have never seen a, such a fresh coriander ever delivered by my oh. vendors or never oh. in the market because I took them directly from the roots and got it at home. It got, 
Oh, so I was like, it is something different. It is looking coriander, but it is something different. But being a chef, professional chef, we come to know about these ingredients now that these are right. also available in market and easily available. Okay. Right. And so, uh, this yes. uh, very good type of leaf, I, these people call it Ran Bhaji. Ran Bhaji is what a wild leaf which grows in farm. Uh, I mean, they don't grow it intentionally. It grows like that only anywhere uh, in your farm. And uh, trust me, I tried it. I collected it. I got it home and I cooked it in Asian style, stir fried Ran Bhaji <laughs> with cashew nuts. <laughs> It was huh. something amazing. I mean, I've never tasted bok choy like that or broccoli. Huh. You cannot compare huh. anything with it. Okay. The wild wild leaf which you get in farms. Wow. Excellent. You know, you've you've got us all so excited about the food. I'm waiting for the next time when we have you in Mumbai in yes, our yes, college yes. so that we can Definitely. see you work your magic with all these ingredients Definitely that, we'll do something uh, that you have spoken to us about. Um, yes, um, to all the students who are watching, uh, you know, to me as I was listening to everything and uh, uh, to all my uh, staff uh, know that ma'am makes notes no matter what. Uh, <laughs> uh, my thing to you is, uh, Besides learning about Japanese cooking from Chef Altamish, the one thing that I picked up constantly from you is that you're a continuous learner and that you do not shy away from responsibility even when you didn't know anything about it. I mean, uh, trust me, I can imagine when Chef, you were told that you need to be in charge of the Japanese kitchen, most people yes, would, uh, would have said, oh my God, let it be, it's not happening. But you yes. took it on and you took it on with every sense of uh, curiosity for the cuisine and yes. then you mastered it. Uh, and then the best thing for me to hear was that you turn to Indian ingredients that can live up to that so that we can still have homegrown stuff but taste like anything else in the world. Yes. Um, there are so many new words for all the, the uh, students over there. Um, I hope that you will remember all these for our students. We definitely have the uh, PPT that we will be sharing with everyone. Uh, I truly appreciate you being here, Chef Altamish, and especially you, on, on Eve. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so much. you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Chef Shai Roy. Over yes, to you. Ma yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chef. Thanks very much, you know. Uh, Possibly, I have learned a lot about Japanese. I mean, you said you keep it on learning every day, chef. True. Even you after being an executive chef, I I feel a very good thing. I'll share with you. I still feel that I am a cook. You see, today's student after passing third year, they put chef in front of the name. You right. see on social media or wherever. I believe that this thing is very wrong. Even I have become an executive chef after eight years of my career or nine years of my career. But there is so much to learn. I mean, I cannot compare myself with the guy who is who is taking 10,000 from same hotel and who is making roti. I cannot make rotis like him. Or I cannot make a dosa like the South Indian commie who is making, he is a commie three, getting 10,000 salary. And I am an executive chef, but I, he, I cannot beat him in his work. True. So I don't, in my kitchen, the students who have worked with me, they know I don't even behave like a sous chef or a CDP. I work like a commie. And I still feel we all are a cook. We, I hardly wear a chef coat, uh, which is different with my staff. I wear a chef coat without name and without designation until and unless it is for some photography or something. But I believe, believe in working, wearing same color apron, wearing same chef coat, what my commie three is wearing. And we have to, I am nothing. I mean, 10 years experience is nothing. You, we have some big name like Chef Manjeet Singh, Gil, Chef Sundarajan. Exactly. I mean, they, they are what, like a god of Indian cuisine or, they are the one who have introduced this hotel management and everything to our country. And who are we to stand in front of them and put chef in front of our name? I mean, it doesn't justify. I cannot call myself chef in front of all these people, especially if you have worked with Chef Satish Arora, oh. Chef Hubert Parora. I know what these guys are. Even now I'm in contact with Chef Arora. We keep on talking. Almost once in a week we do talk. And uh, it is so good to hear from him. Even... At this age, he is uh, 72 or 73 now. But whenever he will call me, he will tell me, but I heard something about cauliflower rice. Ye kya hai? Thoda mere ko ye kya hota hai. 
देन आई टेल इम दैट शेफ ये ऐसे ऐसे होता है देन ही कीप्स ऑन टेलिंग मी इफ आई हैव एनी डाउट इन इंडियन किचन शेफ वी आर ट्राइंग टू गेट दाल मखनी बट वी आर डूइंग इट दिस इज द फैक्ट वी डिड दाल मखनी ट्रायल फॉर अराउंड वन एंड हाफ मंथ इवन आई वाज अवेयर ऑफ दाल मखनी माय शेफ वर अवेयर ऑफ दाल मखनी बट दिस थिंग वाज इन माय माइंड दैट बीइंग इंडियन दे वी विल मेक समथिंग सिग्नेचर ऑफ आवर रेस्टोरेंट एंड लेट्स मेक दाल मखनी आवर सिग्नेचर सो टू मेक गुड दाल मखनी टू कस वन एंड हाफ मंथ सो आई हैव टू जस्ट कॉल शेफ सतीश अरोड़ा टेक हिज गाइडेंस शेफ इसमें पेस्ट कौन से कंपनी का डालना है शेफ इसमें दाल में कौन से वेंडर से लो नहीं नहीं तुम दूसरे वेंडर से ले रहे हो दैट इज द रीजन यू आर नॉट गेटिंग टेस्ट टेक इट फ्रॉम दिस वेंडर ओनली यूज दिस टाइप ऑफ पेस्ट ओनली उसको कितने देर सोक किया था तो इट इज लाइक दैट ही इज सेवेंटी थ्री एंड आई एम नथिंग आई से आई एम ट्वेंटी नाइन आई एम नथिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिम बट दिस इज द वे वी डिस्कस स्टिल रेसिपीज इफ ही हैव सम डाउट ही वॉन्ट टू नो समथिंग अबाउट मॉडर्न इंडियन और सम प्लेटिंग आइडियाज he will whatsapp me at night or wherever he feels he will whatsapp me and i will reply and wherever i have something i just message him any other chef you'll see chef sondarajan chef gil i keep on doing that i am in touch with everyone because of this reason only i am little selfish whatever i want to learn i message anyone i want if i think that i need to learn learn something about south indian cuisine i will message chef sondarajan straight away and i'll ask him chef i am not getting this i want to know this from you only because we know these people are legends and no book or nothing can replace these people even if you will not get recipes on google true absolutely and this is our mentality i mean even we don't consider ourselves as a cdp till date so this is the only one request i keep on requesting everywhere wherever i go that no one is a chef i with chef chef satish arora chef gil and everyone we are no one true true chef true thank you thank you any which way like you mentioned in your ppt it was quite basic but that base is important that's what we have been talking about yes. if your yes. base is important you know no one can catch you again uh, from basic i'll tell you as i have got chance to interact with so many people i'll tell you uh, what thing i have bought in practice I, as i was part of pre opening so we don't used to get all the ingredients available in our kitchen pre opening kitchen you must be knowing that ye hai to ye nahi hai ye hai ye nahi hai so i thought one thing sitting in my office one day once that uh, how to do conduct a trade test now so everyone used to come i'll be making seafood ravioli i'll be making this pasta i'll make australian lamb chop this lamb shank but my kitchen was not fully operational we were in try we were doing trials used to cook we used to throw like that uh, so one thing which came into my mind is our dal was easily available for staff uh, the aata was easily available for making okay. chapatis and rice was again easily available staff rice so this was the thing which i used to give to my cdp my commies and everyone by make four similar rotis from scratch if you do all of them similar perfect chef you are selected you give proper tempering to your dal and you are done you do steaming of your rice properly you are pass commies ke liye i want only three dishes to be done exactly and trust me even student from good colleges hotel management colleges a very good colleges from mumbai i have been to them that colleges also they fail to make good dough for chapati and they don't know how much water to add and the same guy was talking about making australian lamb chop served with this jo and that jo and this is facts he must have done excellent in this making lamb chop and everything but he don't know making chapati which he is having since last 20 22 years <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And this Absolutely. is fact. I mean, many student, ma'am, uh, trust me, eighty percent of student fail in making this. Absolutely. Using we are doing. We are not. Uh, I mean, Italian or we are not Japanese or Chinese that we probably right. say if, while going for trial. I'll make this. I'll make that. But what about dal, chapati, and rice? What rice. we are eating for so many days. <laughs> I mean, students will fail if we give them many types of dal. In front of them and ask them to name they all the dals. Identify. They don't know and they are having it every day. So, are you really interested in cooking, or you just want that title in front of your name? Chef, chef, chef. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The the trouble with the the new generation is they see all this stuff on TV, and they think uh, just like instant Maggi noodles, uh, becoming a chef is an instant uh, process. You. Yes. <laughs> Add add three years of college and suddenly you bloom into a chef, which is so not true. There's years and years yes. of honing your skills, 
and acquiring as much knowledge constantly, constantly. Correct, correct. Uh, you know, I'm really going to take this thing down for dal rice and atta and uh, make sure that they make chapatis. Uh, Ma'am, I'll tell you, you must be aware of this competition. What happened? Everest culinary challenge, huh. which happened in February or January. Uh, okay. So I was part of this jury and uh, we were done with all the rounds we did with finalists from all over the India. Right. Uh, we were done with all the rounds. We did almost uh, five rounds and then uh, I was given this uh, task to design to task, the final task. So right. I told them that I need uh, cuts of vegetable to be done. Eight, right. uh, third year student, I need cuts ah. of vegetable and I gave them cut like Alumit, Macedoa, Brunoas, yes. Britain. And I gave all of them one 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 zucchini. Oh. And trust me, fifty percent of them failed. They were removing their phone and checking the size. Ki size kya hota hai. I I told them one thing that I'll be sitting with scale. Right. And I'll measure everything. Oh. They were just copying and checking here and there on Google and whatnot. I was standing there only, and all were from best colleges of India. They right. they have qualified in some competition, and they came oh. to Mumbai for the grand finale. And the second last task was this. And the last task, what we gave them was making chapatis. In final. <laughs> <laughs> and hardly two, la two lady contestants, they were able to make it. And others were making dough for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, truly. So this is, I mean, th these are great tips, honestly. Uh, one thing that uh, we do actually in college is may for them to make eggs. To yes. see whether they can make an egg and yeah. how they can make it. But I think these three things, if you're making every day and you can't do it, mm -hmm. then uh, yes. you should hide yourself in shame or join uh, the other three departments. Right? This task, this task need not to be announced when you are conducting it in your college. You have to yes. give them complete surprise one day in practical and you will yes. see all all the maps of all the countries. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> So it is something bad what we feel when we are HM graduate and we stand there and our general manager or our FNB manager or anyone stand there for taking trials and we ask students to make chapati and they fail to make that chapati. So it is something which even we feel bad about it. Their parents have right. spent so much of money, college have right. taught them so much and they are not able to make that. So these are the basic thing what I have told you. There are many other examples. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you again, Chef. I honestly am looking forward to uh, this, you know, like obviously like everyone else to for this COVID thing to be over and done with and uh, waiting to have you on the campus sure, so that uh, you can meet the students face to face. You know, sure, uh, listening to somebody like you empowers them tremendously uh, to you. know that this is a possibility. But it's not something that happens instantly or constantly Correct. working at it. I mean, a simple example, you're in your, vill your uh, village right now and you're still uh, looking at vegetables outside. You're figuring out new recipes. I'm sure you're going to come back uh, with a whole lot of indigenous uh, uh, yes. products and, and recipes that you would never have tried. So, yes, I have done uh, a very good collection of recipes I've done. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. So we look forward to all of that and let's make us the first stop so we also can share in the uh, in those ingredients to see what all yes, uh, is so out there. Do it. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we wish your entire family too. Please stay safe and please stay well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, you very safe. much. Thank you for having Thank you. Chef. Thank, Thank you, you Melroy Chef and the whole Thank webinar you. team. And to Justin and Daniel who are uh, Thank you, sir. making sure that all this happens. Thank you very much. Good evening, Chef. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Did you hear my voice? Yeah.